Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods, Pastor Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana. And this is the daily devotion for the week of June 22nd, 2020. I've titled this, A Lot is Happening Behind the Scenes. Ever watch uh, the show Survivor? Even if you don't, I think you will appreciate the reality behind the show. I caught an article recently uh, online uh, from Living Magazine that talked about all the behind the curtain stuff, if you will, in making Survivor. It was really kind of interesting. For example, if you want to do an inter internship <clears throat> for Survivor and be part of the quote unquote dream team, well, talk about a dream job. The dream team <clears throat> is a group of college, young college students who score an inter internship by spending the summer testing upcoming survivor challenges. Uh, <clears throat> the internship takes place on sites like <clears throat> the island of Fiji or whatever location the, that survivor is being filmed. <clears throat> the interns also help out around the set with prop making and production preparation. I'm telling you, that would be an interesting job. There's more. Every contestant, it turns out, actually gets paid. You get $2,500 if, if, if you're the first person voted out and it goes up from there. If you make it to the jury, it's five figures at that point. And if you make it to, if you can come to the, to the uh, uh, live event, to the live reunion at the end, you get $10,000 for that, as well as um, uh, the grand prize of a million bucks. Now, another thing, another, even though you don't see, uh, see them, there are tons of camera crews all over the place with a goal of capturing everything that appears, everything the contestants do on the island. In fact, every contestant has their own cameraman who is to follow them around no matter what they do, except for the bathroom. 24-7 during monsoons, whatever Mother Nature throws at them no matter what. Of course, the medical crew is also always at hand. A huge group of people. It's not just the survivors, but, but hundreds of people to make this go. And they all have their own accommodations along with those folks are those that construct sets, produce music, sound, lighting, catering, all the stuff that goes with filming. In fact, in season 16, the article says that some of the contestants found the place and, and managed to steal some Gatorade and peanut butter. Since all the, since then, all the contestants are closely monitored and limited to where they go. As they travel from one spot to another, contestants are blindfolded until they get to the other parts of the island so they don't see challenges or other things that they don't want them to see. Meanwhile, contestants are, are, are limited to rice and whatever uh, they can catch, and so the hunger is real. And if you make it to the jury, you spend a lot of your time in what they call the Ponderosa where they can eat and drink and frankly be pampered uh, for days on end until the contest is over. Reward robes, by the way, are pre-approved uh, before the show begins to, uh, to match the personality of those uh, contestants. And they're given essentials, certain essentials, they say. Now these are funny. Certain essentials like birth control, feminine hygiene products, vital medication, sunscreen, an insect repellent, but no hairbrush, no toothbrush, no deodorant. Ugh. Finally, the tribal councils are a lot longer than 10 minutes and a few questions. It's been said to last up to three hours. A lot of boring parts. Afterwards, the producers will sift through the, the footage to get rid of all the boring parts and keep what they call the quote-worthy lines. In the end, what goes on behind the scenes, frankly, is a very deliberate thing very controlled so that what we see is ultimately a polished entertaining result now consider what goes on behind the scenes in our game of life as christians ephesians 6 10 through 12 tells us finally be strong in the lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual powers of evil in the heavenly realms. See, our biggest fight is not with the flesh, 
not with the world that we see, but ultimately with the things that influence the world we see, the spiritual things. There is a fight going on for our souls. Behind the scenes is a spiritual battle, and every day we are called upon to arm ourselves with the spiritual gifts. Nowhere is this more revealing and certainly more true than Good Friday. Outwardly, in the flesh, Jesus was being crucified, mocked, brutalized. Behind the scenes was a spiritual battle, the greatest spiritual battle. On the one hand, just listen to the way Jesus is being mocked, and you can kind of tell. Matthew 27, 40, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it again in three days, save yourself. Come down on off the cross. Here's a cue. If you are the Son of God. Remember that phrase, right? The phrase the devil used speaking uh, through those jeers. It's his voice that we hear. Same, same technique that he used in Matthew chapter 4. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. So we see the devils there. But lest we forget, God is also at work. Jesus died on the cross on purpose. And in his death, our sins are forgiven. Ephesians 1.7 Darkness covered the land, but sin was destroyed along with death itself. The cross was the culmination of the Lord working out a plan that started all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, working behind the scenes over thousands of years for our salvation. The spiritual battles continue to rage around us. And keep in mind, however, that the outcome is settled. Satan is destroyed and heaven does in fact reign. In the end, Philippians 2 will come to pass, which promises that every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We will partake in that victory. Let us also keep in mind other important elements at work behind the scenes because of the cross, such as faith and hope. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 and 19, 23 to 25. Paul talks about life in the Spirit. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly, for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for it, what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Hope is a behind the scenes element that dwells in our faith in Jesus. By faith we hope in much more than our physical world, our fallen state. We wait for a new creation, knowing that it's not just a wish, but something that is coming and just as real. In fact, 2 Corinthians 4 says the cross and the resurrection of Jesus are within us a treasure, a treasure in jars of clay. And so Paul says in those last verses, we fix our eyes not on what we see, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Behind the scenes, God is working for the good of those who love him. And in so many places, we see God is with his people. Uh, but we also see faith and hope at work, clinging to the Lord. A lot of those grace-given things all going on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, we also see within ourselves a spiritual battle. I know Christian parents who put on a good face, a strong face for their children, but inside, they're tortured with guilt about working too much rather than being with their kids more. They wonder if they're doing a good job raising their kids and things like that. I know Christian teens who don't know who they're supposed to be, don't feel worthy of love, don't know what their purpose is, are pretty much, um, are they pretty enough? Uh, are they good enough, athletic enough? Uh, they're just hoping they don't screw up and make life worse for themselves somehow. I know Christians who struggle with addiction, wondering how they might fit into a sober world and, and often use their defensiveness to protect themselves. 
I know Lutheran pastors that are insecure about themselves too and wonder if they're doing enough, creative enough, good enough for the job. Christians struggle with all the same things that non-Christians do. Likewise, Christians are good at producing a happy smile and an edited version of themselves for others to see on most days. But inside, a whole different battle for many, not all, but for many, is raging in Christian hearts. And it is often a very guarded thing for us. It's a very personal reality show, edited and produced. But let's remember the reality. The Lord already knows the real you, Psalm 139. He knows the reality. He knows our hidden things, all those hidden things about us. He knows our hearts. And still, knowing all of those things, he loves you and wants to be with you. His desire is for you to know him and gladly calls us friends. John 15, 15. His love for you is an everlasting love, Jeremiah 31, 3. Uh, and he wants you to live with him in his father's house forever, John 14. The Lord is not producing a reality show. He's producing a new reality for you and me. He is creating a new heaven and a new earth, a new you, a new everything. The old order of things we are told will pass away. And he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. We won't have to compete for it. Jesus will never vote us off and never vote off any believer. Actually, since Jesus is for us, nothing can stand against us, the scriptures say. We will never go hungry or thirsty again, not in heaven. We'll never be in want there. We can't see heaven yet, of course. But it's already a certain fact. It's a reality that is being built as we speak. It will premiere on the day that we leave this world, that death will have us. And death will be swallowed up in victory just the same. And we will receive that grand prize of eternal life when that happens. There's a lot happening behind the scenes. Wouldn't it be nice when all those things come together with the reality that is heaven? Now, such things shape what is going on for others to see. The fruits of the Spirit, thank God, are on display. Uh, faith is on display. Our life is demonstrated when God works through us. Some see a life. Uh, some see life as a game of survivor, survival of the fittest, etc. But not Jesus. That's the kind of world we have now. But it isn't the kind of world we will have in Jesus. His is the way of Savior, to want to save us. He knows the truth of our sin and our secrets. Yes, he forgives and loves just the same. And faith in Jesus is our immunity necklace that promises we will get to the winner's circle in the realm of eternal life. This is our promise. This is what's working on our behalf behind the scenes by the grace of God. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and forever and always give you his peace. I'm Pastor Woods. Thanks for being with me.